Cool. Okay, are we ready to go, Tom? Yes. Excellent. Melanie Love and Keman Bazra, welcome. Today we're trying to make a short film about a class of drugs that we use a lot in Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. And it's kind of complex because it's modern and new, relatively. Uh, certainly when I was training, it was on the scene. But now it's, it's a big player. So we're going to start with a rationale of why we use these drugs. Mel, can you give us a kind of overview of the diseases very briefly and tell us where these drugs fit in? Okay, so inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's and colitis are both inflammatory bowel disease. Yeah. It's an immune modulated disease where the immune system is basically attacking the bowel. So the group of drugs we call biologics mm -hmm. is actually, strictly speaking, they're targeted immune therapy drugs. So they target certain cells within the immune system and that then stops the uh, disease working. Uh, stops the disease from attacking the bowel mm -hmm. and causing the symptoms and uh, by blocking that pathway we can enable the Crohn's or colitis to enter into a deep sleep, mm -hmm. what many consultants refer to as deep mucosal remission. Yeah, so I would say there's too much inflammation there, it's excessive, it's inappropriate, we used to just, well we still do use steroids in the short term but now these drugs offer us really something much better and much more specific and targeted, targeted right? That's correct, yeah. Kiran Basra, mm. ph pharmacology, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, so we call them the biologics mm -hmm. and the reason we call them this is because the drug molecules are actually based or made up from um, living organisms. As in the lab, not from the rainforest? <laughs> in the lab, okay. in the lab. Okay. Um, or parts of living organisms. Yeah. Um, so that's why we call them the biologics. Um, as Mal mentioned earlier, they do interfere with certain cells that form part of the immune response, which in the long term effectively inhibits or decreases or even stops the inflammatory response on the bowel, which causes the inflammation, the ulceration and the scarring of the bowel. So you're making, and you're a bit shy about this, you're making antibodies in the lab, aren't you? Yes. And antibodies against certain crucial players in the inflammatory response. It's like an orchestra. Yeah. You're trying to knock out the lead violinist. That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah, and you've made an antibody to knock that lead violinist out. The whole song goes astray, and so you, you don't get as much of a powerful immune response that's causing all that damage. So, yeah. so the way generally we explain the medication or how the blocking works is, um, and I usually do a drawing for this one, so, uh -huh. yeah, so that usually is quite helpful. But you have to imagine that the immune system starts from a certain point and there's messages that go one to the other to the other and at the end of it you get inflammation and just for um there are little branches off there such as gut specific drugs that uh, so what these drugs do is just sit in front of one of these drug um they're like dominoes, it's a cascade of dominoes. So okay. we're blocking, stopping one domino from going down to the next one. And that then stops the inflammation at the end. So that's how I tend to explain that these drugs were. Okay, okay. Kiman, do you want to add to that? I mean, these drugs are special. Yeah. And, you know, they knock out specific. People in medicine use it like, they call it like the silver bullet. It goes exactly where it's needed. Yeah. Okay. Now, no free lunch here. Quite important drugs, but side effects and risks. What, what are we worried about? So, because the therapy is quite targeted, it does mean that there aren't that many real-term side effects. Um, on the day that you're given the medication, um, people tend to feel a bit under the weather. That can be things like headaches, flu-like type symptoms, okay. um, runny nose, that kind of thing. That's generally associated towards the beginning of treatment when we're giving lots of doses or higher doses together quickly. Um, as you get more stabilised on the therapy and we move on to your maintenance doses, these side effects do tend to subside. Okay. And that's what we would call true side effects to the medication. There are risks, like with any other medication that you were to take, and they can be things like allergic reaction. Mm -hmm. um, you don't know if you're going to be allergic to a medication 
until you've had it in some cases. Mm -hmm. um, particularly with some of the medications here, when they are made in the lab, they're quite large molecules that we make. And because of that, your body can sometimes mistake them as a foreign bug or a foreign body that it wants to mount an immune response to. Okay. So if I'm a patient, mm -hmm. what about, what is this? Tablets? Something under the tongue? A bit of cough syrup? Is this how I'm taking it? Or... No, so um, lots of the medications are in injectable form. So some can be injections that you can do yourself at home with training with a nurse. Mm -hmm. Some of them are infusions that you would have to come into hospital for, for like a, a day or half day case. Okay. Um, where it would be nurse led, you would have an infusion which can take... So a needle in my arm? needle in your arm. Okay. Um, well, I sit in a comfortable chair You sit in a lovely chair. You can long? have tea and biscuits. Um, at first, we like to run the infusion slow just to see how you're reacting to it and okay. whether you're going to have any sensitive reactions towards the medication. It can take up to two hours to begin with. Um, the more stable you become on medication, the longer we do it for, um, we can cut that down to about half an hour when you're really stable on cool. the medication. Okay. We then have an hour observation period afterwards with the nurses just to check that you're all okay before we send you home. Okay. That sounds really cool. Mel, you're going to say Sorry. something. Well, there is a tablet. So the reason I was saying at the big, uh, I, I said that uh, these are targeted immune therapy, not all of the drugs we use in the biologic group are actually truly biologic. So there is a tablet as well. So yes. We have, we are going to do, we have done podcasts to make sure that we uh, explain each tablet with its side effect, each medication with its side effects separately. So uh, that will, will, that will come late. Clarify that, yes. Okay. But you're interested in making the patient better safely. And... I think before we go on, I mean, our next little short film will be about doing certain things to make sure that the, the patient is fit to receive this drug. We call that screening. Before we go on to that, is there anything else you want to say to our patient audience about this group of drugs? I think one of the things um, that's probably important to say is that to a greater and lesser extent, there's a difference between the drugs, but essentially what we say, because infection, we're altering the immune system, how the immune system works, we need to be careful with infection. Therefore, with all of these drugs, the standard advice is, and we will go down in greater detail with each drug, that you do not have a dose while you're unwell with anything other than your inflammatory bowel disease. So we would say, uh, if you've got a cough, a cold, you don't have the dose on that day, you can move it around. Very few of these drugs are given every day, so you can move things around. And we can go into that in greater detail when we see each other before starting a medication. Okay. And there, I think a lot of the information that we've talked about are in little pamphlet form as well. That's correct. And yes. they can be looked at um, yes. uh, later and read about. So Mel and Kim, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about screening and, and those drugs specifically in forthcoming films.